Hey, everybody, welcome back. Last time we got together, or just earlier today, probably for some of you, uh, Justin was on here kind of talking about the, the CSDM service builder and how we can leverage that and uh, all the strides ServiceNow has made in making the CSDM more, more digestible, more user-friendly, uh, how we can incorporate that into our, our lives and working on that. If you remember, we talked about earlier that, uh, you know, progression, that, that uh, crawl to fly implementation process. So some of the other things is, is as we get down into there, we kind of have our business services and our offerings and tying those in to the application service that there where the rubber meets the road, right? Where we're starting to tie in our conceptual things down to our actual physical elements or our things on our network and our servers and our components or our SaaS applications and all those exciting things. Um, so Justin was going to kind of talk about today, if I have this right, Justin, or talk about next, that that application services and finding those endpoints and doing those discovery and setting up our application services. So with that, I will turn the floor over to you, Justin, and, and let you run. All right, I appreciate that, Scott. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll uh, we'll jump right into um, you know service mapping um, and how that works in ServiceNow, right? So uh, in ServiceNow, there's um, you know currently two methods uh, for for service mapping. Uh, discovery is going to be a precursor to it, right? Uh, where you know it runs the horizontal discovery, um, and that piece is is going to be the the precursor to service mapping. Um, but within service mapping, you've got uh, application services and tag-based services, right? So uh, the tag-based is going to be within your cloud infrastructure. Uh, CMDB managers can uh, put tags, um, you know, to um, you know to these cloud devices, whether it's AWS, uh, Kubernetes, whatever, um, you know, kind of platform is used there. Um, you can identify those tags and um, run service mapping just based on tags. Um, it's a little bit lighter weight, right? Doesn't require credentials, um, things like that, uh, that the application service mapping does. Um, and usually returns good results um, if, you know, tag-based is, is clearly defined, um, you know, throughout the, throughout the platform. Um, the kind of more traditional way of service mapping that, you know, we'll kind of go into more detail here today is around uh, application service mapping. So what application services are, uh, are going to be components that are used to make up a uh, uh, make up an application service. Um, so these are devices, um, you know, CIs, uh, load balancers, databases, things like that, um, that define a service that's used um, within your infrastructure, uh, within the ecosystem. Uh, so for that, uh, we're we're in a demo instance today. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll jump into an existing. Um, map so we kind of get an understanding of how the map is laid out and then I'll go into how that mapping is made uh, creating custom entry points um, in, in pieces like that um, so this is uh, what we're looking at right now is a specific application service uh, this one is for APAC billing um, so you can see this one is defined by an HTTPS endpoint uh, and we'll jump into that here whenever we uh, view the map So we'll do, so once you define a name uh, for service, um, you define uh, the entry point um, that is gonna be first, right? Um, so so once you have your entry point defined, that's gonna say, where does this start, right? Is it a, is it, if it's a web-based application, um, uh, what is the website we're hitting? If you know uh, which server it's hitting, what is that IP address, right? And your entry point is gonna be the top, top level, right? And so how this runs, is ServiceNow will run a uh, what's called a horizontal discovery on this top level endpoint, uh, which is you know HTTP, uh, which we saw on the the information page. Uh, we'll jump back to that. Um, so we pick billing, we pick billing. Uh, so HTTPS is the entry point. Uh, you can see that here, and whenever we go into the map, uh, you can see that entry point. Uh, and that is done with the horizontal discovery. So it's going to identify what that device is, discover that, you know, specific endpoint. And then from there, it runs a top-down discovery. So that's that's where the delineation between uh, service mapping discovery is, right? 
uh, discovery is just horizontal, right? It's it's just going to go across and identify, you know, services, devices, and pull information, you know, back on those. Uh, where service mapping will key in on an ind individual device and really drill down into it and identify what you know what kind of lives on on that endpoint. Uh, so there's our entry point. We've got that HTTPS, right? Uh, which is, you know, just our URL, whatever it may be. Uh, it could be an application server, could be a database. Um, and and then from there, it digs down into what makes this service run, right? So in the real world, say you, you need to open a change ticket, um, you know, a, a service is not working um, that, that's used, right? Um, it, the, the team that gets that change ticket would be able to come in and identify and see maybe there's an, an open incident on one of these mail servers. There's a there's a patch, um, you know, there there's a, a previous change or something um, on, on a service that, you know, knocked it out and it's, you know, now we need to switch over to failover, right? Those are kind of how all of this comes into play, just helping identify uh, what your service is and, you know, what, what makes it run. Uh, so this is all done by... Um, you know, by by the mapping within ServiceNow, it's all it's all automatic. Uh, you do have the ability to um, add items here. Uh, so connection suggestion ServiceNow will pull back uh, items that it finds whenever it does that top down. Um, it'll it'll identify potential uh, connections uh, and it does rank them automatically for you, high, medium, or low. Uh, so it gives kind of a a confidence level uh, to what those connections should be. Um, and then you do have the ability to, to manually add um, any items uh, to these as well. So say your, your service isn't exactly right, there's another database that lives on it, there's a load balancer, anything like that that's not showing up, you do have the ability to manually add those uh, for you know, accurate uh, mapping. Um, and really the, the idea for this is uh, to accurately map out services. Um, so if a change is raised against these or um, there, there's ever an outage, right? You can accurately track down, um, you know, hey, it's not just this website is down, you know, what's, what's actually causing the outage and, uh, and you know, uh, a precursor to root cause analysis, right? To, to really understand and define that issue. Um, so going into this, uh, we'll jump back one step here to, uh, to our application service. Uh, so whenever you're going in to create a service, say, you know, from scratch, um, you can identify, you know, what is your service name going to be, right? This this could be simply the name of the service. If it's a homegrown application, right, you can identify that here. Uh, you can identify what type of service it is. Um, is it an application, a web app, you know, exchange, you know, kind of where does it run? What does it run on? You do have the ability to say manually create it as well. You can identify a particular, you know, CI that it runs. Say it's, you know, you know, it runs on like a Unix server. You've got that um, that CI already mapped in in ServiceNow. Um, you'll be able to uh, identify that here as well. Okay, and then you can add that as your entry point, and from there. ServiceNow will take that uh, specific entry point once you add that and give it a name and it'll automatically start uh, mapping that out for you. Um, so from that point, right, you can you can take what it gives you, right? It'll it'll dig in on this particular server, find any databases, load balancers, you know, networks, anything that's associated with this um, as it does that detailed discovery. Um, and you can add to it, you can remove pieces from it. Uh, you can add websites, you know, things like that. So to to really get an accurate depiction of what what a particular service is, um, there's there's a lot to go into here uh, with this. But uh, Scott, that's kind of the 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 short end of uh, of discovery um, of uh, of service mapping. Um, you know, if you if you do want to go into more detail uh, with that, um, we can certainly do that. I do have a question. So you, you mentioned a couple of different things, and I I think it's important to call out. So maybe it's not entirely a question, but you mentioned can I can use service mapping, which is going to interrogate when I'm building my application service, it's going to interrogate that that 
entry point, then those CIs below, I look at the things they're communicating with based on network traffic, what's running on that machine, all those type of things. And you mentioned tag base where I have my uh, things out on GCP or Azure or AWS or whatever it is. So I'm working with my DevOps group to de to deploy tags on those objects. I can read those and figure out how things are linked together. And then you also brought up manual. So I could do, I can always fall back to do a manual uh, build my map out manually, or if if for some reason, uh, say something wasn't tagged correctly, or or maybe I, I can't reach a thing because I don't have the applicative credentials we might need, say maybe to to read what's actually running in my WebSphere server, I can always manually correct my maps. Is that correct? That's right. Absolutely. Isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and the the manually mapping comes in if. If you know kind of how your infrastructure is laid out and you know what the mapping should be right we can essentially replicate that in service now um, or we can you know trust the pattern right that the service now runs and defines um, but but yeah there's always the ability to to manually um, you know manipulate the map as needed okay and um other thing i was interested in there you, you kind of touched briefly on the endpoints and you showed how we have different types of endpoints that service now has patterns automatically built out for how would i know how do i necessarily know what my endpoints are you know where where are service now admins I, i'm being app maybe it's this homegrown app how, how do we how do we go about finding our endpoints and working with the teams for that yeah so what you would have is your service now admin uh, work with this me of that service um to you know understand and define um, what that service is as a whole, you know, try to pull out requirements of of how it exists and, and you know where it runs. More often than not, it's going to be a web application, right? It's going to have a URL endpoint uh, or an IP address, potentially server, right? Those will those will be the the most common. Um, however, you know, there like you said, right? There's a lot of patterns here out of the box um, that ServiceNow does have. Um, so once you define and you know how that service exists and what it runs on, say it's a SharePoint you know, base service, right? You have that ability to, to use that SharePoint type pattern um, and you can you can identify it that way as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I've noticed working with this in the past too, sometimes people get hung up on, on you know, some kind of all-inclusive master endpoint, which a lot of times ServiceNow recommends those from, the, from interrogating the load balancers. But I, I run into too uh, that, a lot of times an app might have more than one endpoint, uh, more than one way of interacting with it. You know, it might have that user interface that's, you know, a web application, but then I might also have, you know, uh, those typical queues or some other API based interface that's that's communicating with it also that might come into the app from a different channel. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I've, I run into kind of, you know, helping bridge that gap with people of, you know, there might be multiple endpoints all for the same application. It's not necessarily a, a, a one always in every case. Sure. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can set up multiple entry points, um, you know, as needed. And then, you know, kind of as, as we ran through before, right, ServiceNow will go down and interrogate that specific entry point. Uh, it might, might find some uh, related information and, and tie those together um, on the mapping, you know, uh, that, that mapping tree. Um, so yeah, you can, you can certainly have multiple entry points. That's terrific. And I think if, uh, just kind of wrap this up, if people remember, we talked about this before, and that's again, that application service that this is kind of where mapping joins in from our, our business service, our service offerings, all those things to the application services, which is, is that usually that stack of an application, different groups might define it differently. I might have a production, maybe it's geographical, but it's it's whatever that that stack is. And that's where we tie into those those components that are found, as you called out multiple times, just in that horizontal discovery that finds the individual components. And that's where we kind of tie in that that application services, how those those components talk together and work to provide our systems. So that's fantastic. Uh, I appreciate you coming in today, spending some time to, to talk about this. And we'll, uh, you know, 
stay on board. Keep watching this page. We'll have more video blogs. I think uh, I think next, Larry and Marcus, where they're going to kind of be talking about the life cycle stages. So if you're familiar, uh, you know, we we're kind of talking about CSDM these days, and they're going to be talking about those life cycle stages. So if you have any qu uh, questions or thoughts on how we might, uh, you might, that, that might work in your environment, what's trying to happen there, what is ServiceNow doing around those life cycle stages, how does that replace all those different states fields on all the different things, uh, please uh, tune into our next session. Uh, until then, everybody out there, uh, we'll see you next time. Same iTom time, same iTom channel.